Well, welcome to today's talk, Wednesday the 2nd of August. Now, I think it's probably good news that the World Health Organization is starting to publish data on the huge excess mortality that we're seeing uh, around the world and is still carrying on well into 2023. They don't give a lot of reasons for it, but it's interesting that they're publishing the data. Let's look at some of the data now before we discuss it further. So here we have an estimated excess mortality. Now the data is going from, as we see, January 2020 through to the end of 2021. The grey are the reported COVID deaths. And the redder coloured line is the estimated excess mortality. And of course, we can see that even by this official WHO data, that the excess mortality can in no way be attributed for, be accounted for by deaths from SARS coronavirus 2 from COVID. I think that graphic is pretty clear and uh, encouraging to see this from the World Health Organization, I think. Uh, now, here's another graphic they've put out here uh, 14.9, basically nearly 15 million estimated excess mortality, but the COVID deaths only accounting for, well, say only, but accounting for 5.42 million. And uh, if anything, in most places, the COVID deaths tended to be overestimated rather than underestimated because of COVID killing people with uh, comorbidities. Uh, they give a bit of a breakdown on this. Let's look at that. Um, so this is the Africa situation. So COVID deaths in Africa, as we know, really very low due to, largely due to the um, well, what is it due to? Due to the demographics, younger age ranges, but also due to other infections and possible cross immunity and under reporting, of course. But, but nevertheless, it is giving a pretty low uh, figure there for COVID deaths in Africa, but excess deaths again, much higher. The Americas, again, the Americas are a pretty big area. This is, these are World Health Organization big areas. But again, the official COVID deaths in grey and clearly much, much higher overall excess deaths. This is a global trend which is persisting. OK, this data doesn't go through to 2022, 2023, but we know in many places, well, the places we've looked at in detail, that the excess mortality carries on at high levels certainly in the UK, through 2022 and into 2023. This is an ongoing global slow motion uh, tragedy that's going on. So that's Europe, as we see there. Excess deaths way ahead of COVID deaths. This is Southeast Asia. And again, OK, we're going to see some underreporting, but again, we see great numbers of uh, excess deaths. So what are the World Health Organization saying about this? Um, global excess deaths associated with COVID-19. So this is the time period. So basically it's all of 2020 and all of 2021. But as we know, this is continuing, unfortunately. So they say they're doing a comprehensive review of global deaths, directly and indirectly associated with the pandemic. So they do seem to be making a, a good attempt here. They're saying it's comprehensive and uh, it does appear to be so. Um, and this is a direct quote, the World Health Organization is tracking global excess mortality as the pandemic evolves over time to reveal a picture of its full impact, burden on countries, health system and individuals. Nothing to disagree with there, of course, we would agree fully. Excess mortality is defined as the difference between the total number of deaths that have occurred and the number of deaths that would have been expected in the absence of a pandemic. Again, completely just basic information, but necessary to... To clarify, in a non-COVID scenario now, understanding the excess mortality. Excess mortality includes deaths attributable uh, directly to COVID-19, yes, but we've seen that the real deaths are much, much higher. Just remind ourselves that was the Southeast Asia position. The excess deaths are way higher than the, the COVID deaths, as, of course, the WHO is readily agreeing. Includes deaths attributable uh, de deaths attributably directly to COVID-19 that were not counted or reported. Well, yes, yes, that's true. But of course, uh, in many places, a lot of deaths were attributed to COVID, which were uh, uh, probably deaths with COVID, not from uh, COVID. So that, that kind of goes both ways. They don't really make that clear, unfortunately. 
includes deaths indirectly associated with COVID-19 due to other causes, of course, other diseases, uh, resulting from wider impact of pandemic on healthcare systems and society. Well, yeah, as far as it goes, we agree with that. But it's minus, interesting, minus any deaths that would have occurred under normal, that would have occurred under normal stances that didn't occur due to the pandemic. Um, so real figures there being higher, if anything. Um, changes in social conditioning behaviour. So obviously things like less traffic accidents, Influenza deaths were well down. Quite why that was, if that was only due to the lockdown restrictions, isn't clear. Due to local lockdowns, less travel, things like that. No mention of uh, specific adverse events of lockdown, social, economy, psychological, psychiatric effects of lockdown. Be interesting to see more on that. No mention of adverse reactions to medical interventions. Iatrogenesis. Things caused by medical treatment. No mention of that, unfortunately. But we do note from their graphic that they give here that um, the excess mortality did increase at this time when uh, vaccinations increased uh, as well. Temporal correlation, unfortunately not mentioned. I mean, why wouldn't the World Health Organization want to look at all possible scenarios? Strange. We want to know what's causing these excess deaths. Let's consider everything. Some things we might reject pretty quickly, but let's be open and consider it. It's the main thing I wanted to say today, but uh, I did get a, an email about the Government of Canada. What is going on in Canada? I mean, it's incredible. Um, so this is from the Government of Canada. Now, this was originally... Uh, I originally saw this. Let me just show you some websites, actually. That was the WHO website there. Uh, which uh, we've just looked at. That data is all there. And some extra data, not a lot of extra data. But then I was sent an email about this uh, this article here from uh, Canada. Um, get a COVID-19 booster shot before the fall. Hamilton area in Canada. McMaster's Immunologist University. McMaster's Immunologist say all people, especially pregnant women, should get booster shots this fall well this wasn't advised in the uk uh, pregnant women weren't in the advisory group in for example um the, the spring booster campaign in 2023 in the uk nor the autumn booster in 2022 <clears throat> so quite why the canadians are so keen on this is, is rather bemusing and i'm sure it won't be in the uk advice for uh, autumn 2023 either um, so Canada advice, rather strange. So here, um, here we've got um, an immunologist um, and Canadian research chair in ageing at the immune team at Masters University said it's now time to get the word out for boosters. She's confident Ontario will struggle to hit its vaccination targets this fall. Heck, I didn't realise it was this serious, actually serious. Well, that puts a bit of a different light on it. There might be some bureaucrats in Ontario bar embarrassed because they're not reaching their their targets. Um, anyway, don't let me misinterpret that article. I'll put the link on so you can see it for yourself. Obviously, on this channel, we'll go back to the original evidence, which is there, uh, officially, directly from the Canadian government. And I'm just going to mention a couple of things that they mention now. Now, the Canadian government talk about uh, vaccination of individuals who are pregnant. Now, what on earth they mean by that bemuses me. I assume they mean pregnant women. Um, but it would be nice if that was clear. Studies continue to support vaccination during pregnancy. Well, they don't give specific ones, but I guess, I don't know. Would it depend on where the studies came from and who sponsored the studies to some extent? We have looked at this sort of thing before. Um, safety of Omicron uh, containing bivalent, so a mix of Omicron and other viral antigens. Well, not the viral antigens, the, the ingredients to make the viral antigens. The body makes the viral antigens at undetermined doses, of course. The safety profile of the bivalent mRNA COVID-19 vaccine booster is comparable to the original ones, the original mRNA boosters. So comparable side effects. 
They also say that there's no evidence of vaccine effectiveness against infant outcomes is available. So quite sort of saying they haven't got the evidence there. But they are saying reassuringly uh, that the uh, level of adverse reactions for these new bivalent boosters are going to be the same as for the original boosters. So let's just give a couple examples of that. So we did look at this. These are just things we've looked at recently. We could have looked at many, many different things. We could look at this data from Western Australia, where we saw that um, adverse events following immunisation rates were 0.241%, uh, or to put it another way, uh, one in 414 doses. So presumably the Canadian authorities are happy with pregnant women suffering this level of side effect because we're reassured that they weren't higher. So they seem to be happy with that. And of course, these are minimum figures because we know that these are underreported. Um, we actually talked with Senator Rennick recently and we considered that these side effects are probably unreported by as much as uh, 90%, meaning only about 10, 20% of them are actually reported. Um, we don't know that for sure. That was just us speculating, but he is an Australian senator. Of these adverse events following immunisation, 97% occurred following COVID vaccines and the adverse events following COVID vaccines were 21 times more common than what we might call conventional vaccines. So again, looks like the Canadian authorities are quite happy with that because we were reassured that the side effects are no worse with the um, bivalent Omicron new vaccines that they're using now than the other ones. And then, of course, another study we've just looked at, um, myocardial injury after COVID-19 mRNA. This one was actually after the Moderna vaccine. One recipient in 35, 2.8% had vaccine-associated myocardial injury as adjudicated by the panel of experts from increased highly sensitive troponins. So Canadian authorities seem quite happy with that, which I, I find bemusing. Um, quite why would they want to do that? I have no idea. But there we go. Now, on a brighter note, um, we did look at... Um, the um, the Ch child rescue project in Kenya that we're we're looking after. Now we did make so I haven't got the th any thank yous from from the uh, from the site yet, although the, I know the money is already being well spent. But we did this about six months ago with a buy me a coffee, which didn't work out as well as we'd hoped. But I'm just going to show you some so the, the Anne who's in charge. She lined some of the older kids up and they, uh, they, they 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 said thank you. Now they're saying thank you to me, which is hideously embarrassing, of course. They're actually saying thank you to you because you're the ones that um, support this work. But let, let's have let's have a look at them now. I think we've got a, a video of them here. Hi John, my name is Precious. I'm taking this golden opportunity to say thank you and your friends who bought coffee. I'm Lucy. Thank you John and your friend who bought coffee. Hi, I am Angela. Thank you John and your friends who bought coffee. Hi, I'm Susan. Thank you John and and your friends who bought coffee. My name is Elizabeth. Thank you, John, for and your friend who bought coffee. Hi, my name is Margaret. I am I am in grade seven. Thank you, John, and all your friends who bought coffee. Hi, my name is Brenda. Thank you, John, and all your friend who bought coffee. Hi, John, and your friends. I want to take this good opportunity to say thank you for the coffee. Hi, my name is Mother. Thank you, John, and your friends who bought coffee. Hi John, my name is Abby. Thank you, John. Hi John, my name is Anne. Thank you, John. Hi John, my name is Sian. Thank you, John. With your friends who bought coffee. Hi, thank you, John. Hi John, thank you. Thank you and your friends who bought coffee. I'm Lucy, thank you. Okay. <laughs> um, that was the, 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 they were the older kids. As I say, that was six months ago. We actually used PayPal this time because it kind of, the buy me a coffee thing was quite complicated when it came to 
uh, sending money to Kenya, but we've got straightforward systems now. So um, I know some of those kids, and I know the money's getting there. And I'll put some links for people that are interested at the uh, at the end of this video. So um, always nice to finish on a on, on on a positive on a positive note. Um. So World Health Organization, yeah, talking about excess deaths. That's encouraging. Canada. It's not just, I mean, I'm not picking on Canada, but they just seem to be determined to get as many of these mRNA vaccines into as many arms as possible and um, don't really seem to be paying full cognizance to the, the side effects, which have been adverse reactions would have been highlighted around the world. A lot of the evidence that's quoted is about the early days in the pandemic, which we could argue about, but of course we're in the era of multi uh, multi-natural immunity uh, Omicron now surely the risk-benefit analysis has changed I'll leave that with you the references are all there do take a look and um, thank you for watching